welcome back to the affordable scrapbooking series. Uh, this video brings you the projects for April. Remember, this is the kit that I purchased for April, and you can go back and watch that video and see exactly what is in this kit. If you're new to scrapbooking and you're staring at a blank page, the first thing you're going to want to understand is that how you arrange your items on the page is called your composition. And this is true um, vocabulary for any art form. And here I'm showing you how to break down a 12 by 12 sheet of paper into a grid of thirds. And this is actually called the rule of thirds. And what's important about this grid is that the eye tends to focus on where these lines intersect on the grid. Those are kind of hot spots that pull attention in. So that is where I put my cat photo on this layout. Now I had purchased a punch to go with this kit and I will use that shape for sure but uh, I wanted to let you know that you don't have to be limited to that shape. You can hand cut shapes and that's what I did here. I just took a piece of red cardstock which I don't use red much and cut a circle and then that allowed me to take all my little sheets of pretty paper and um, use it as a guide so that all my circles would be about the same shape and size. And then looking at these papers, I was sure to line up the circle above portions that I knew I wanted to keep on the images. So I wanted to be sure to decorate that top left corner, so I just used this sheet of paper and it had an image that was easy to cut out to use as a decoration. The title of my layout, I used that tag punch to give myself spaces for hand lettering. And here you can see I'm working on more um, lettering and I'm creating straight lines across this tag just by measuring on each side of the tag and connecting the dots. And here you can see me hand lettering. One tip is if you don't like your handwriting to use all capital letters and that can make it more interesting. And if you add little dots to the edges of your letters that can give it a little um, decoration. And so I used more tags to finish off what I wanted to say in that title, and I worked on my general journaling. I didn't have enough space, so I just used um, that same ruler technique to add more lines. So I was ready to finish decorating my page, and I grabbed the embellishments that I purchased for this kit, the epoxy stickers and the wood veneer. And when you're looking at where to place these items on your page, a good rule to follow is called the rule of threes. Notice that has something in common with the rule of thirds. Odd numbers in general are actually uh, pleasing to the eye. So I start picking out elements and I want to use three of each element. So I had already put on two of these epoxy stickers. So up here in the corner, I'm deciding which one I want to use and put on a third. And so then I have those done and then I move on to the wood veneer elements and I'm looking around where I want to put my three pieces. That's when I realized I drew a little heart in my journaling so I thought I would replace that heart with a wood veneer and of course I needed the right size so I chose the smaller one and I'm just going to glue that in place over where I had drawn a heart. And that gives me one wood veneer to work with. And then on this little circle on the corner I decide to add two more wood veneer and there are now three groups with wood veneer and three groups with the epoxy stickers. Note that those two hearts on the right are actually in one group and when you put multiple items together in a group it works as one item and that's what you're looking for. So here's a final look at the page. I hope you enjoyed this one. And now we're moving on to project number two. In the first project, I just used one large photo to kind of get a sense of design. And for this project, I'm going to show you more realistically. You are likely to have more than just one photo that you're going to want to talk about. So I'm continuing to talk about my cats, and I printed out two photos on one 4 by 6 sheet of paper. And um, I'm looking at these photos and trying to decide what I do with them. Don't mind that one of them is upside down. It's not a big deal. Now, I don't like the red in that photo with the cat, so I decide not to use that one. Instead, I just pick these three and I trim them down, leaving a little bit of white border around the edge. Then I'm ready to pick out which paper I want to use, and I pull out this yellow and green, and I had leftover blue from that first layout, and I figured that blue will be great to put right behind my photos. And I look at this green, and I have green in my photo, but I don't like the way that green matches, so I decide not to use that one. The yellow is a nice contrast against the blue, and there's some yellow in the other papers that I chose, so that works okay. 
So now I'm trying to decide where I want to put these photos on my page. I could do them vertically up and down, or I could turn it sideways and kind of shift my photos around, and I decide this is what I want to go for. Before I glue things down, I realize those cat's faces are kind of looking off the edge of the pages, so I switch the photos to make them look in towards the middle of the page. Now I take all that paper left over from my first layout, and I don't want to waste any of this because we are trying to work on a budget. So I take my punch and I punch out a bunch of these tag shapes, and I'll show you why in just a minute. I got all my uh, tag shapes punched out, and you'll notice on the right there that some of them are a little wonky, but that's okay. I'll show you how we can hide that. So what I'm going to do with all these tag punches is um, go all the way around my photo grouping and any of those funky tags I'm going to kind of tuck underneath other ones so that um, the mistake isn't showing. So I just spread all these tags out and around and then I'm ready to glue them all down. So I just take off things that are in the way and I just gently lift up and start gluing them down. That way you don't have to worry about um, shifting everything. And here they are all set and ready to go. Now the right hand side of my page has a little more fullness to it than the left hand side so I just punch out a couple more and these tags are a little bit short because the paper was running low but that's okay because I'm just going to tuck them and it'll hide it. And I'm ready for my title so I just use the leftover paper again from that first layout and I'm using tags again to um, make landing spaces for my title. Now look what I did with my photos. I didn't glue them all the way down all around just in the middle and that leaves me room so that I can tuck things underneath and that gives your design a little bit more detail and depth. So I just hand write my title and I tuck those back up there on the top of my layout and um, put them in there behind my kitty. And like the last layout, I have a big space at the bottom of my page to fill up. So I decide that's a good spot to add a little bit of journaling. And I want to bring all those colors from the top of the page down to the bottom. So I just glue this strip on the bottom. And this is a tip to glue it down and then turn it over and then trim it so it's exactly the right size. And then I start putting my tags back on. Again, overlapping and filling. And that one is a funky tag, so I leave it off the edge. And then I will, once I get these glued down, just like I did with that blue paper, I will flip it over and then just trim off those edges so they exactly match up with the edge of my project. Now I'm looking for places to add detail, and the way I left my words um, gave me a gap that I could use to fill in with a bit of decoration. And that's just a little arrow that will point to my kitty and um, show that he's sitting on my lap. When you're adding detail to a big empty space like I did with this little cluster down here in the bottom, one tip I have for you is not to make that cluster too big because then it starts taking over the visual space of the layout. So I just kept this little and I kept my journaling really small and I just wanted to say a couple of things about how much I enjoy this kitty who likes to sit on my lap. And I realized that I'm so used to addressing my scrapbook pages to my kids that I wrote this journaling as if I were talking to my cat. Like in the last layout, I'm looking for three spaces to add some more embellishment. Now, putting these hearts all around the title brings a lot of attention to the title itself. But then some of the other elements of the page kind of get left behind. And so I decide to move this heart around and I'm trying to figure out where to put it. And I decide I like it in the bottom of this picture because it allows the eye to bounce in between those elements and really take in the whole space. And here's the final look at this layout. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see all my videos in the future. See you next time.